Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I recently got into a debate with another angler regarding goby style baits, baits that resemble gobies, and whether or not they work outside of the Great Lakes region. This other angler was trying to tell me that they only work in the Great Lakes region, and I was trying to convince them that that is complete bogus, and they work pretty much around the country. And it's not because they're resembling gobies, it's because they're resembling sculpin, which are very, very similar to what a goby is. They look extremely alike to the point where a lot of people around the country are killing the sculpin because they think they're gobies, which are considered an invasive species. So I want to set the record straight here that goby style baits are extremely good productive lures outside of the Great Lakes region. And I'm going to give you a few of my favorite baits to resemble gobies slash sculpin and give you a little bit more background on it. You know, uh, gobies are invasive species. They were brought over in the ballast water into the Great Lakes, meaning ships would come over and they would dump their water that they were holding in their inner tanks that they sucked up over in other parts of the world and the gobies would get sucked up in there, and then when they dumped that ballast water into the Great Lakes, gobies were dumped out. And gobies have done a very good job at uh, procreating and are pretty much around the entire Great Lakes region. Does not necessarily have to be in the Great Lakes. There's a lot of rivers they've gone up. There's a lot of lakes and areas close to the Great Lakes that they've somehow managed to get there, whether that was by... Uh, humans taking them there or whether it was by birds carrying them over. I don't know offhand, but there are lakes that have gobies now that are close to the Great Lakes. And I would expect to continue to see them uh, continue to expand like most invasive species. Sculpin, on the other hand, look very much like gobies. And in my opinion, the easiest way to tell them apart is a Gobi's pectoral fin looks like a suction cup. It's made to kind of almost cling onto the bottom, onto a rock. Sculpin have two little pectoral fins, very much like a bass does. They're not really all that useful with much other than maybe a little bit of balance. So that's the easiest way to tell them. But if you happen to live, say, in the Ozark region, Sculpin are a huge source of forage for bass of all three species and they tend to live pretty much all over the place i have i've caught sculpin i'm gonna say probably a dozen sculpin located all over the country whether the ozark region over uh tennessee river lakes i've caught them all over the place they're pretty much just like gobies in that they're mean little fish like they will they got a big mouth for their body and they will bite your baits uh, if you happen to fish a Great Lakes, you get tap, tap, taps on your bait all the time. Feels like a bluegill tapping at it. It's probably a goby. Um, <clears throat> so they're very common, but they provide really good sources of, of protein and meal for bass. And therefore, they're a great bait to try to resemble when chasing bass. So I'm going to give you some of my favorite ones. A lot of these are going to be bottom orientated. So keep in mind, both gobies and sculpin hang tight to the bottom. Uh, I know gobies, I believe, do not have air bladders, so they rest pretty much right on the bottom. I can't say that. I know specifically if sculpin are in the same category, but I know that they are bottom-related fish. So anytime you're talking about trying to mimic them, you want your baits on the bottom. So generally speaking, you're going to be talking about... Uh, you know, baits that you can drag on the bottom or baits that, you know, you can definitely keep in very near contact to the bottom. A lot of these baits are actually going to fall under your drop shot category. I personally like to use a little bit shorter leader, but even if you're using, say, a two foot long leader, you got to keep in mind if you make a 70 foot long cast, your bait you know, you you may have a two foot leader, but your bait's probably only a couple inches off the bottom based on the angle of the of the line to your rod tip. So one of my favorites, this guy right here. This is a set the hook stumpy crush. This is the killer pumpkin color. Uh, it's a very good color. I personally like to throw colors that are more of your green pumpkin shade, but have a little bit of gold, a little bit of purple in it. Uh, that will do a good job at mimicking 
a lot of your gobies and a lot of your sculpin out there. Uh, so the Stumpy Crush is one of my favorites. As you can see, a lot of what you're going to be looking for is something that's got a more of a bulbous head, a wider head that then tapers off into the body because that's what your gobies and sculpin look like. They've got the widest part of their body is where their jaw is. So from that standpoint, I like to have something that is tapered down into it. So the Stumpy Crush is one. The Poor Boy uh, Bates Gobi is another one. This is one of my favorites, and the color on this one is actually their Golby color, uh, color. This one does a great job. I have I have won a lot of tournaments on this bait. That's all I'll say up in this region. Uh, I love this color. I love that bait. Another one, uh, Mega Bass Dark Sleeper, guys. That's what this bait does. It scoots along the bottom, just like a Sculpin or Golby. You can see, again, from a profile standpoint, widest up here tapers down this bait this is a three quarter ounce one the whole point to this is to keep this bait down near the bottom just kind of scoots along this bait in my opinion is one of the better like overall exact replicas of what i would consider a goby i personally i cut this fin right off this top fin that acts as a weed guard i actually trim that off when i'm using it just because i think i get better hookups that's me personally. Uh, another bait that I love to use is a smaller, say a 3.3, 3, 3.8 Kitek Fat Impact. This is their Gobi color, but I fish it a little different. I fish it on a wobble head. So I'll throw this out and I'll retrieve it slow along the bottom, making bottom contact. And I'll just let the little, uh, you know, the swim bait just kind of deflect and swing all over. This is a great tactic that I think really kind of developed around the Great Lakes region, but you're starting to see this really shine on some of your Tennessee River Lakes in the Ozarks region. Uh, just a great pairing. You take any of your little small swim baits that resemble a goby in color, put it on a wobble head, and just drag it along the bottom. A nice straight, slow retrieve works fantastic. And then last, is another bait that's a bottom bait that scoots along the bottom. I like to throw a little tube. So this is the two and a half inch mini intimidator tube. It's the ISG uh, one. This is one that's kind of really popular in my neck of the woods. Just a great little tube. I'll throw it on a, you know, on a, well, I guess I'll vary the head weight, but basically I'm fishing it on one that's pretty heavy to keep it on the bottom. I'm trying to get this bait just to scoot along the bottom because that's exactly how a goby or a sculpin moves. They really kind of just dart back and forth. They don't swim necessarily like a typical fish. They almost move much more like a crayfish to me. They're just kind of short distances and they're real quick in their little movements. But no matter where you live, guys, I'm going to say the majority of the country don't think that a goby bait you can't be using just because it says goby doesn't mean it's not going to do a great job at resembling a sculpin. And sculpin live almost everywhere. They're a really good indicator of water quality. So a lot of times you see them in your bigger, deeper, clear bodies of water. But they are everywhere. There's all there's a whole bunch of different types of them. I Don't quote me on this. I want to say there's like a hundred different types. There might be more than that. I don't recall from my uh, limnology days in college. But I do know... A lot of people out there are killing Sculpin because they think they're gobies. That's how prevalent that they are throughout the country. So guys, get yourself some of these uh, goby slash Sculpin imitating baits. Go drag them around on the bottom. Keep them scooting around real quick. And you'll see they generate a lot of bites for all three major species of bass. So thanks for watching, guys. Throw in the comment section, what is your favorite goby slash Sculpin imitation bait? so that the rest of us can learn from you as well. Otherwise, if you have not hit the like button, uh, if you have not hit the like button, hit it. If you enjoyed today's video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned, new video coming out tomorrow.